While I typically grow cabbages in ground in the cooler weather of spring and fall here in Ohio, there are some advantages to growing cabbages in containers. It's mid-May, about a month and a half later than I would normally start cabbages in the garden, so I am potting my late started seedlings up because I can better control their growing conditions, water, and fertility in containers than I could in ground. And this gives me a nice little extension on my harvesting season. In today's video, I'm going to share some of the most important aspects in having success with container-grown cabbages. And I'll be following up in a couple of months with the harvest of these plants so you can see how they did in containers. Our supplies are pretty basic. We're gonna need a container, cabbage seedlings, potting medium, fertilizer or food, water, and optional hoops and insect netting. I'm growing a very compact, small-headed cabbage variety, and I'm potting up one plant per approximately five gallon container. Now for a larger standard size cabbage plant, I'd probably opt for a 10 gallon, or go as large as a 20 gallon for two standard sized cabbages or four mini cabbages. Keep in mind that overcrowding cabbage plants is one of the most common reasons that cabbages do not form proper heads. When choosing a potting medium to grow your cabbage plants in, keep in mind that the keys with cabbage are high fertility and proper drainage. Now I want something that's well draining, but not overly well draining because I don't want all of that moisture and nutrition to just wash out of the pot every time I water. I also don't want to have to water all the time. That's one of my biggest complaints with container growing in general. So for this planting, I'm opting for a new potting mix called Glee. Glee utilizes hydrofiber, an innovative and sustainable wood-based planting medium that is used by professional growers. Glee has a couple of advantages over your typical potting medium in that it holds onto and redistributes water more efficiently and offers optimal air spaces, which leads to faster and better root development of plants. Glee also contains a small amount of fertilizer, enough to give my plants a little boost, but not so much that I can't customize and add in my own nutrition for my plants. And that nutrition aspect is critical for cabbages. Cabbage, like all brassicas, are heavy feeders. And I will get the best results by really dialing in on that. Now, regardless of what potting medium you use, I highly recommend adding in some good compost or aged animal manure to that mixture, as well as opting for a naturally derived fertilizer at transplant time and again when the cabbages begin to form heads. I'm opting for aged cow manure and I'll be using Vegetables Alive fertilizer, adding in two tablespoons at transplant time. But whatever fertilizer you use, just be sure to use the application instructions on the packaging because they're all a little bit different. I'm going to mix up my Glee potting mix and my cow manure. I'm using about a four to one ratio of potting mix to manure. And keep in mind that Glee expands a lot as you work with it. So it's best to kind of fluff it up as you're mixing. So I fill my container just within a couple inches of the top. And then I like to thoroughly saturate my soil prior to planting. And that is because, as you can see here, a lot of times your potting medium, no matter what type you use, is gonna shift and settle once it's watered. So I dumped about three gallons of water in here. I'm gonna let it all drain through. And then I'm gonna to top this off with a little more soil, resaturate, and then plant. And of course, you'll need your cabbage. I prefer to start my cabbage indoors under grow lights and then transplant them to a larger container. And for more details on that whole process, check out the video linked above. You could, of course, start your seeds right in this container. I just find I have better results starting them and then transplanting them. Timing wise, do keep in mind that cabbage grows best in the cool weather of the spring and fall. The optimal growing temperature being in the 60s Fahrenheit. Now I typically start from seed mid-February for an early April transplant or early July for an August transplant. But one of the advantages, as I mentioned, to growing in containers is that I have more control over growing conditions than I do in ground in the garden. So I am starting these a little later than I normally would, but I can easily give them some afternoon shade by changing around the container position and control those moisture levels a lot easier. 
Also, think about your variety. This time of year, I tend to opt for more heat tolerant and or early maturing varieties. I also, as I mentioned, like to opt for the smaller, more compact varieties when growing in containers. The variety that I'm planting today is one of my all time favorites. It is called Tiara and it forms a very compact plant with small one to two pound heads. It's also very quick to mature. So this one should be ready for harvest in about 60 days. So I'll be able to get these harvested before that intense heat of August really sets in here in Ohio. And to transplant these, I'm just gonna set them in the container at the same depth they were growing in the seed plugs. And I'm also adding two heaping tablespoons of Vegetables Alive fertilizer to this planting hole prior to setting my transplant. And just firm that in really well. And again, with the water, water, Watering is so important, especially again, going into the warmer months. One inch of water per week is ideal for cabbage. And I will definitely opt for adding a little more versus being shy of that when growing in containers like this. Now I'm not out here measuring the amount of water that these get. What I do is come out once or twice a week when we're not getting rain, stick my fingers about two inches deep in the potting mix, and if it's dry, I water. Now I will give this guy a healthy helping of water. So for a five gallon pot like this, I'm giving it at least a gallon, if not two or three gallons. And that is because I prefer to opt for deep, infrequent watering over frequent, more shallow watering. I find that it is better for the plants in general. But the nice thing is that with Glee, I should actually be watering less than I would have to water with your average potting mix. Now, another thing you can do if you have trouble with this potting medium drying out too quickly, I like to opt for a natural mulch. So grass clippings are my go-to, but you could use leaf mulch, hay, straw, whatever you have access to, just anything that's gonna hold that moisture in the soil, keep it from all evaporating out. And if you have trouble with cabbage worms like I do and don't want to spray, I highly recommend putting some insect netting over your plants as soon as you transplant. Bonus, this also helps keep any potentially hungry animal critters from nibbling on your plants as well. And a final very important consideration is location and sunlight. A cabbage will perform best in full sun, approximately eight hours a day. But as I mentioned, in the hotter months, it does well in most areas with some afternoon shade. So I am placing this container on the west end of the garden where it will still get sun from about 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. But after that, the barn is gonna block off that intense late afternoon sun. Cabbage will grow in partial shade, but too much shade can result in loose heads or no head formation at all. So stay tuned, I will be sharing an update come harvest time of how this lovely little cabbage did. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.